I'll just check we're up and running. Just will take me a second. That looks good. Hello, everybody. Who's just connecting now to today's live stream? Uh, as you can see, I am. Um, I've already started on this a little bit earlier today. I've recorded it all <clears throat> as well. Um, so, what? Just to explain a little bit, of, uh, what I'm doing here is. Um, Obviously, I've got the reference photo to my right, um, and I actually have it up in the studio as well on a on a screen. And uh, this panel is it's an it's an oil primed panel. But what I've done is I've added another oil layer to it, um, oil primer of my own with this knife, so it's quite smooth. Um, it's a lot more. It's a lot slicker. Because I find when, when you buy oil primed panels, they um, they don't use enough primer. <clears throat> so I put some more primer on. I've covered the whole thing in a middle value mixed with just raw umber and white. And now I'm wiping out the light shapes. So I'm composing and drawing at the same time. Just wiping out the lights. So I'm just at the stage now where, so this is all wiped out here. I'm just at the stage now where I'm working up to where the coffee pot is going to come in. Do um, drop, me a, uh, drop me a message if you can see me and if you can hear me okay. It's always good to know. Please do say hi. Hopefully you can... Um, Hopefully you can see the stream. Ah, hello, Gail. Thank you. Ah, good to see you, John. Hello, Scott. Really nice to see you. Um, oh, everybody's popping in now. I guess it just, I've, I've been streaming for about two, three minutes. I guess the feed has just got out to everybody. Uh, so yeah, I was just explaining this is like, uh, basically I'm composing with light and shadow. I'm drawing with light and shadow and nothing else. No lines. There's a grid on the photo and I'm, I have little registration marks on here just to make sure that I get my, my drawing accurate. Just, I, I want it to be in, everything to be in the right place at the start. So the bottom of the coffee pot is like here. Uh, it's a it's a very slow process. This it may not be um, the most interesting thing to watch, <clears throat> but just in case the first bit of the stream didn't get through, this is a um, fifty by forty centimeter oil prime panel, and I put another layer of oil primer on it, quite thick, and given it a couple of weeks to dry, so it's quite a slick surface. Then I put a layer of oil over that. Then I've covered it with. A layer of raw umber and white, which is about a middle value, about a value five in, in months or terms. Overall, it's come out probably a little bit lighter, maybe like a six and a five and a half to six. And then I'm wiping out the lights as I go along. So I'm thinking about like, where does the top of the, the coffee pot go? Is the right hand side of the coffee pot. I need some little registration marks to get that in the right place. So at the moment, uh, uh, I'm streaming now because I've had to put the lights on because it's the 1st of December. Happy December, everybody. And um, it's now getting dark here in the Cotswolds in the UK. So uh, I have the, the, the live setup, if you like, next to me. Um, 
So I've been working from a combination of that and the photo today. Uh, but now that the light has completely gone, I've got to go, I've got to rely on the photo for this, for the last bits of wiping out, because now I put the lights on, the pattern of light and shadow that I'm, I'm working with here is completely different on the subject. You know, I can't use that anymore. Thank you very much, everybody. Good to know that it's working. So it's slightly, I was in two minds about streaming this because it's a, it's a slightly it, uh, tortuous process. So I'm going to do the coffee pot here, but what I'm not going to do is do the outlines of it. What I'm interested in is this big light shape here on the left hand side and getting that in the right place and just by wiping it out. It comes down and meets the top of this apple pretty much um, just comes vertically down there. So I'm, I'm, I'm drawing, I'm drawing the, the light shape just by wiping it out. And the nice thing about working this way is like I can see the composition taking, taking shape. Then I've got the cast shadow of this squash on the coffee pot comes down and reaches this apple about here. So I'm going to be putting in the, the edge of that cast shadow, because this is all one shape, you know, in terms of composition. This is like the shadow side of the squash and this shadow here. This is one shape. So this, the shadow side of this squash and the, and the cast shadow, one shape. And the same with the apple, it's all one shape. So you get to see, when you just draw something with lines, you don't really get to see how it's all working as a, as a composition, you know. And um, often shapes can look very, very different when they're just line. It's part of why I think it can be slightly tricky to, uh, to draw things out by line before you paint them with line, because uh, the shapes often look very different. So as well as taking out, I can put in, because there's a little bit of the second apple you can just see there. So both apples and their cast shadows, these are all one shape, you know, because if you squint down, they disappear. And if I squint down and I can't see it, then I will, um, then I will, I won't paint it. I don't want any detail. I want light and shadow. And I think in some kind of, in a way that's difficult to define, working this way also, it affects the end result. I think you end up with a slightly different kind of painting when you work this way. Some things are tricky, like this ellipse up here, this is gonna be hell on wheels to get right. Just wiping out. But you know, I can always change it if I'm not happy with it. I haven't done any edge handling yet. I will do a little bit of looking at the edges. And what I'm probably going to do as well is in, in, in a, a short while, I'll start putting in some lower values. So at the moment, I'm basically working in two values, you know. But they have a, I always think the wipeouts at this stage, they have a kind of a, some sort of ineffable beauty to them. It's difficult to describe. And although, I would never leave one in this, in this state, you know, and call it a, a painting. Sometimes I think it's a shame when you get a little bit further through and uh, all of that goes, you know, you take out. There's something special about them at this point, something about the simplicity. I actually, I love working this way. It is very, very slow going now. So it's not the most interesting thing to watch. Um, but it, it's a, it's a, this is part of what I was just teaching on the last workshop I did, which I, and all of the workshops I'm teaching at the moment, actually, which are, they're based on what I've decided to call the painter's perception, which is looking at things like this, looking at things in terms of light and shadow and edges instead of things. 
I wish you were here painting with me too, Alex. You're in the UK as well, aren't you? We should totally try and hook up sometime. But I think you're, you're London way, is that right? Uh, are you? Or, I'm not sure, I actually can't remember. It would be very nice to get together and paint one time. You'll be more than welcome to visit me in the Cotswolds any time for a painting session. That would be fun. We could live stream it. Uh, so yeah, I mean that's you can see. Hopefully, I mean this is like three shapes: just the handle and the inside of the ellipse, the light shape, and the, and the light shape on the outside. But already, you know, you get to see. It, there's an impression of form there. If I soften this edge, and you you can see how the thing works in the composition. It's not like I'm going to do the outline and then I'm going to, you know. So where, where would this go? I mean, some, where would something like this go? It would, it would, uh, the next stage is letting this dry for minimum a couple of days. Usually I leave them a little bit longer, make sure it's completely dry and then put an oil glaze over it, an oil, uh, oil it out, put an oil layer over it and then paint into the shadows with glazes and into the lights with um, opaque paint. A lot of you will have seen this that I've posted. On same coffee pot actually on uh, Facebook recently that this started life in a very similar in a very similar method so let's see if I can get this spout in Birmingham I did not million miles away an hour and a half away an hour and a half away we should try and hook up and do something that would be fun some flowers that would be fun Yeah, wipeouts, they're just... And there's something about... I think it puts you into a completely different relationship with the piece. You know, it, 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 you think differently uh, when you start something like this. Top of the spout. So I'm going to get a little bit further into getting all of these shapes in, and then I'm going to start thinking about edges. So I don't want to be, th this is the antidote to getting hung up on details and, and to, to, to get too involved in painting things. Things are our enemy. We, we want to be, uh, well, for, for this kind of painting anyway, you know, uh, I should qualify that. <coughs> um, not, you know, I mean, like the classical kind of way of, of working, doing a careful drawing first and then transferring it to the panel and building up gradually. That you know, I'm I'm by no way suggesting that there's anything wrong with that. I'm saying that I like this method. It's like it's almost like it, it keeps the, the for me anyway. It has the nicest keeps the nicest parts of almost a kind of a very visually visual based. Not quite impressionist, but more like the Boston painter's kind of way of of working, of a focus on light and shadow and the big picture with, uh, you know, a strong focus on composition as well. And I love them at this point. It would be interesting just to keep the values like this. I must do it one day. Just do one and just keep the values like this, like really narrow all the way through and just see what happens maybe a smaller one that isn't going to take me quite as long as this one's going to take this is going to be quite a lot of work to finish this one uh, oh so another one that i did like this this one actually was a wipeout I, it's got a bit of sinking in in it now but that it's the same size actually that was painted in the same way as this one I don't know if I'm going to finish this one, make this one as finished as that one was. I have a mind to let this one be a little looser, possibly. Alex says, are you working from life or photo ref? Both. So I've got the actual setup here on the left of me. So I began with that. I'll try to describe in a moment like how I've arrived at this composition. But now it's dark. <coughs> So I've had to put a light on the easel to continue working, which means that, you know, I've got lights both sides of the of the panel of the easel. 
So that throws out the light and dark shapes on the setup. So now at this point, I'm working from the photo, um, which is kind of all right at this point. Uh, but I, I'm really glad that I managed to, st to start this one painting from life because I think it, you, you, you respond somehow differently. You see the values in the context of all of the values in the room, not just within the context of the photo. That's part of it. And I don't know, it's hard to describe. All I can tell you is I feel a difference when I'm working from life to when I'm working from a photo. I'm not against working from photos at all, and I do it quite a lot, although I was for a long time. I was religiously against it, but I'm not now. See, this is wrong size. And um, <clears throat> these days I, uh, you see, I really like this composition. I can, I can see it now. I can see the pattern, the lights and the shadows. Until I do handle all the edges, it's still difficult to see how the composition works. But, you know, this is like the bare bones of painting, really. You know, uh, the light and the shadow shapes, that's what makes the composition. So um, going back to working from photos and working from life, like this painting is going to proceed with both. So uh, when I can come back and work on this again, I'm hoping to leave the set up there for another couple of days while this dries um, and then uh, and then come back to it. Which means that, you know, it's taken up my still life stand. So in the meantime, I will need to work from photos for a couple of things. Um, and, you know, especially the response to the values, I want that to be from from the actual subject that's there. Uh, because I find that I, I I often end up with a slightly different value balance when I'm when I'm working from life than I do when I'm working from a photo. You know, I think it's fascinating. I think both can produce really beautiful results. I'm just trying to bring in this light shape now. It's slightly lighter, but it's not as light as the as the it's not as light as the coffee pot. Yeah, working from photos and working from life can both produce really beautiful results, I think, from my own experience. And the funny thing was, I started working from photos more when I started streaming online and I started teaching online. And then I, I it was a bit of an epiphany for me because I, I, the first few that I did from photos, I was thinking, oh, this isn't going to work out. It's not going to look very good. You know, it's like, I'll do my best, but... It's not going to be the same as working from life. And the first few that I did were pretty much indistinguishable from the pieces that I did from life. And maybe that's because I'd spent years working from life beforehand. I don't know, you know, and, and I'd, I'd evolved a lot of habits. Maybe, who knows? See, this is all going to, this area is all going to be done with glazes. So as well as bringing up the value a little bit there, what I'm also doing is adding a lot of texture, which is all going to show through. It's going to, it's going to be there in the end of the paint, you know. Do I need to put anything else in? I think I'm there, but I do need to think about the edges a bit now. So the first thing I'm thinking about is where can I soften them? What edges can I soften? Actually, this, this value needs to be light. Oh, and I haven't got this. I think this little fold here down the bottom is quite an important part of the, you know, the gesture, if you like. The gesture of the composition. I, I kind of feel like it's not really complete without it. What do you think? I just feel that it's, it's not leading the eye because that's not even a thing. No, really, it isn't. But um, <clears throat> it's part of the pattern. So I've, I've kind of arranged this around a, a curve that goes up to the coffee pot. Um, let's start thinking about some edges. So this is a synthetic. It's, it's dry. 
So if I want to soften an edge, I will, which I do. I mean, I'm going to soften all of this like to a ridiculous degree before I take it to the next level of painting on it, which will be glazing in the shadows and stuff. But I'll create the the sort of the scale of edges from soft to hard at this point. So like this is a, you see, that's a, a form shadow. That's an edge shadow. So I can leave that, that edge fairly hard. But this is a cast shadow going out to nothing. So I'll soften that right out. And cast shadows get softer the further they are away from the object that casts them. See, this is an actual, that, this is edge, form edge. This is cast shadow. So this I will soften. This is the edge. So I'll keep that bit there hard. That's an edge, a form edge. So I'll keep that hard and soften the cast shadow. And once you start doing that, you everything starts to pop. It really starts to come to life when you when you start. It's not just making everything soft. It's making them making edges soft where they need to be soft and leaving them harder where they need to be hard. And that's a kind of like a. I hope this doesn't sound pretentious, but I think of it as a kind of a visual music. The edges. And uh, this is a great point, in, <laughs> I think, in the composition of a painting to be thinking about that. You don't have to paint the edges exactly as they are, but you do want to keep the relationships accurate. It's the same, for me, it's the same as values, which is like so important. This cast shadow, edge shadow, cast shadow. I'll make this softer. This is a leaf. This is a form that's like edge, form edge. This is a cast shadow, so I'll make this soft. And I would rather sacrifice this form and then restate it. Cash shadow, cash shadow. This edge wants to be soft because it shows the turning of the form. This isn't a, the turning of the plane and it's not a table edge. It's a cloth, which is slightly, makes that edge slightly rounder, you know. So like the leaf, hard edge. The cloth below it softer. These things, they just make such a difference. I'm doing a really bad job of keeping, I, I enjoy this stage so much, I'm doing a really bad job of keeping up with the, with the messages today. Sorry about that. I'm at the interesting part now. You can probably tell it's my favorite bit, playing with the edges. This is all a little bit lighter. Round to the top. Lightest part of the squash. Sorry, let me try. I'm just going to. Um, I'm just going to pause a second while I try and catch up. Um, it's Michelle says it looks big. Is it 15 by 20? It is. Oh, I've got to do some conversions now. It's it's 40 centimeters by 50. I worked this out earlier on and of course I've forgotten. There's about four inches to 10 centimeters. So it's about, <laughs> someone help me, um, 16 inches wide by about 20 inches high. Dark. Soften this back here. See, this is in like semi shadow, so I want that to be just suggested. The spout as well, it's going into semi shadow, so let's get a bigger. This is a watercolor, uh, incredibly soft watercolor wash brush synthetic. And if you just lay this on, like just touch and then drag across, it's brilliant for softening. It's really subtle, you can get really subtle edges with this. This is a cast shadow, so that's going to be slightly softened as well. Edge, edge, harder. But I, I can play with all of these at this stage. You know, I can spend a lot of time standing back and thinking, well, you know, what happens if I make this edge really soft? Maybe I want that edge really soft. What happens if I do that? Do you know what I mean? Am I explaining this up well enough? I hope I am. It's the visual music of the thing, you know, and I think that's a lot of what's responsible for making a, a painting work well. So here, edge, 
edge of the apple. And then as soon as I get round to here, this part here, it, it's, it's cast shadow, so it's going to be softened, right? I did say I was going to stop for a minute, wasn't I, and catch up with messages. I'm being very bad at that at the moment. But hopefully you can see how the things start to take on their, their finished form when you, when you uh, start to mess with the edges a bit. Yeah, there is a grid. At least there is a grid on the photo. Yeah, helps me get things in the right place. But on the, on the panel itself, because I'm creating texture and I want these brush strokes to show through at the end, I've just done little registration marks that it's easy for me to take out where the grid lines cross, you know, you can probably see one there. Yeah, Alex, yeah, it really helps with the drawing doing it this way. Hello, Desire, nice to see you. Yeah, it's, I mean, this is, this is a major debate, this photo v life thing. I mean, Alex says, um, working from life, there's a connection to the subject which is somehow lacking when working from the photograph. I, I would guardedly agree with that, <coughs> um, but I would qualify it a little bit because I think there can be, you know, you can have photography as part of your process without it destroying the art. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like... <coughs> Um, you can also create beautiful work from photos, but there is something different that happens. Um, I mean, obviously there are changes that happen to the image when you take a photo. I can't see that anybody would reasonably dispute that. Uh, even if you're very careful about the colour correction, which I am, um, the colours will generally be slightly different, and especially the values. You know, so I've got a white and a black cube, in my Photoshop, which I've now cropped out because I want to be able to uh, help the, ca the camera register what's light and what's dark. Otherwise, it tends to overstate the values, I find. It just overstates them. And that's a good way to control the value. So there's, lo there's little tricks that you can do to try and keep your, your camera from, from distorting too much. Um, <clears throat> But one of the nice things about a, a photo is the, is the manipulations that it allows you to do. So, you know, I do often use them for drawing out if I want to make sure that something is in the right place, you know, stick a grid on it and stuff. But I just feel that for me personally, I feel that there's, there's something that I get from working from life as well that I, I don't get quite the same... Maybe I just don't feel the same about it. And maybe that's enough, you know. I, I mean, you, you could discuss this until uh, cows come home and, and never reach an answer that would, that would be right for everybody. You know, I think you've got to make your own mind up about these things. But um, for me, I think the danger comes when you try to um, impose your... Let's see if I can soften this with some texture and lighten the value a bit. When people try to impose their preferred methods of working on other people as being the way to work, you know, because if there's one thing that modernism has taught us, surely it's that there are many different perspectives and postmodernism as well. You know, I'd, I'd, I wouldn't throw all of that stuff out. Yes, some of it's horrible and yes, there's a lot of char charlatanism and everything, but... You know, there's good stuff in there as well. I'm rambling a little bit maybe, but like, you know, people who work with installations and that stuff, a lot of it is nonsense. You know, let's be fair, that's my personal opinion. But I've also seen some really moving stuff about very important issues. And I just see it as a different art form to the one I'm involved in. You know, sorry, went off on one there. I, I do find all of these things fascinating. All these, I mean, it's it's the stuff that 
I think keeps you engaged throughout your entire life, like these questions and looking for answers to them. How am I doing for time? I can't go on too long today because I've got band practice tonight, which I don't want to miss. Michelle says, I once did two cube studies, one from life and one from a photo. The photo one had very flat uniform values and the one from life kind of shimmered with very small local value changes. That's interesting. But what about that incredibly beautiful pair that you just painted? <laughs> that was from a photo. I know because I took the photo. <laughs> and you did an amazing job of that. I mean, honestly, I saw that today, Michelle, and my jaw dropped. It's astonishing. Astonishing. So here, like I don't want, uh, if, I, if I squint down, I mean, I can barely see the, 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 the change in value from the shadow side of the pot to the wall, but I, for the, uh, functionally, in terms of the, the composition, it doesn't matter at all. They're so close, so I just paint across that edge. Just, I'm only interested in the lights and shadows. Uh, so what did I think in the end about that squash being all soft? I think maybe I like it. So, I mean, I, I could have this be the main thing, or I could have this be the main thing. I'm leaning towards this. <laughs> There's something about it that just pulls me. I want to get in here and I want to model all of this stuff really carefully. And, it, you know, if I do that, then this becomes the thing. This is not the thing anymore. But when I set it up, I was thinking, you know what? I want to do a really good job of that. I really feel that this needs the harder edge. I was thinking I want to do a really good job of that coffee pot. I kind of feel like I've, I've painted it quite a lot and it would be nice to just really devote some time to it, give it some love and see what would happen. So I'm trying to bring in a little bit more of the nuance of the values. I'm going to go in very shortly with some deeper values here and there. Start trying to define things a little bit more, accentuate. Perhaps is a better word. Slightly lighter in the shadow on this. It's tricky at the moment because this is a big panel. I've had to put the camera quite far back, so I tend to get in, in front of it a little bit, which is kind of annoying. So I can just see a couple of little light flecks on the top of that apple to the right, but <clears throat> you know, it's amazing how, how little sometimes you need to paint to suggest that there's a thing there, that there's a, that it's a, there's a presence of something. Sharp edge on the leaf. Let it go. I mean, these leaves are just here. I mean, I suppose thematically they kind of fit. Like, I've got apples in here and squash, so it's, you know, it's autumn, right? But, um, you know, they're mostly there, just compositionally, really. Starting to think about some lower values. Let me soften the whole thing a little bit <clears throat> and then put some darker values in. Alex says, I've started working from photos occasionally and the results can be just as good. I think for the artist, though, speaking personally, it's not as enjoyable. Oh, undoubtedly. Undoubtedly, I would agree with that. In terms of the end result, it needn't be detrimental, yeah. But then it can be. You know, I really think it can. It's so hard to say because I know that my experience of it is from working from life religiously for 10 years. 
before I allowed myself to work from photos. You know, I used to be quite snobbish about it, if I'm honest. I'm not anymore, but I did used to be a little bit kind of like, oh, yeah, I can see that's done from a photo. <laughs> I shouldn't admit that, should I? But I was. It's true. I was a bad person. But um, so edge, be form edge, be hard, and then cast shadow underneath. So I want all of this in. And I still think there are dangers. If it, it depends on what your desired result is at the end of the day. You know, if your desired result is to paint like Sargent, you know, someone recently posted a, as a comment on something that I'd painted on Facebook, they posted a picture of a, a Sargent painting. You know, if you want to paint like that, I, I'd encourage you to do a lot of work from life. You know, it depends what your what the result you want is. I think a lot of the time, so these values are a bit out down here. This is all too dark. I'm not getting a good idea of how that will work in the composition. I don't think. So I'm just lifting some paint off and then painting over it again to get some nice texture down there. And I glaze over that probably. I don't know that. I mean, that's like bit, it's shadow really, so I probably will glaze over it. And I, I'm not decided on this diagonal. There's a diagonal fold there. I'm not decided on it. I think it might be a little bit too an obvious balance with the one on the other side. I'm not. I'm, I, I, I quite like things that are Uh, un, like balanced, you know, to, like they don't feel unbalanced, but then they're, they're not too s symmetrical, you know. Like here, I got shadow into shadow, so I just paint across that. I'm not keeping up at all. Alex, <laughs> no, I, that was, I love talking about this stuff. Don't shut up. Thanks, John. Uh, Lucy says, could you give a rundown of the brushes you're using? Yeah, I'm just grabbing them quickly now. So um, this is a, a horrendous brush. It's a Rosemary's uh, Hog, a long flat. I hate these, but it's good for, it's my, it's my fattest hog. And also it's good for roughing things in. This is a Cornelison flat hog. I love these. They're quality brushes. Let me see, like this one here, I've had for about 10 years. And it's, look at that filbert, and it's kept its shape. Beautifully overlocked, soft now and worn on the end. Gorgeous brush. This is, a, I don't even know what this is, some cheap watercolor wash synthetic. This is a very lovely Rosemary's angled eclipse. I love Rosemary synthetics. I do not like the bristle brushes. Um, what else have I got? This is a Rosemary's Coma that my son gave a, one of my sons gave a haircut to. So it gives me extra te texture. Just came in and found it like that one day. Well, I don't know why that brush cost me 10 quid. Um, this is a um, Windsor & Newton um, a Scepter Gold. I think now they call it a one stroke. It's a, it's a semi-synthetic, just like a synthetic, really flat. I use this with dry for, um, Softening and blending edges. This is a small Cornelison hog, uh, filbert hog. Same series. What what series is this? Mine are all too worn. The writing's gone off them. Series is the flat ones are. No, it doesn't say on it, or it's just worn off. Is that all of them? I think that's all of the ones I'm using at the moment. Alan says, "When will the next stage follow up?" I don't know. I mean, I've got to let this dry before I can do any more on it. So probably a couple of days, a couple of days, probably. Suzanne says, the biggest mistake I see people make is not going dark enough in the dark. Yes and no, because to me, I like this as it is now. And I was saying earlier on, like you can, it's about the balance, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Like if, 
if I painted this and there are some areas that, that could be darker, that, you know, if the relationships are out, at the moment the relationships are very simple in this. It's pretty much two values, maybe three really. So, and you can paint in a very high key and it will still work. So I think it's, it's about the relationships more than just the lights or darks, you know. Oh, David, you know Eugène Carrier. Yeah. What, what amazing work. Graydon Parrish first mentioned him in connection with some of the stuff that I do. And I looked up his stuff and it's gorgeous, you know. Yeah, that's a good point. Alex says, um, there is recognition that what one gleans and learns from direct observation really is the best training and learning to see, to quote a fabulous painter. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's some mileage in that, I think, as well, for sure. Andre says, do you print your photos? Never, no, I use them digitally because I don't, uh, printing them restricts the value range too much. Um, and also, God, it plays hell with the colours. I mean, most home printers are just awful. Ask Michelle, my wife, she was worked professionally and with them for a while and uh, she uses some very colourful language when you start talking about home printers and their colour accuracy. She worked in fashion for Burberry. Andrew says, I love working from life, but the changing light makes it difficult. Yeah, I, I don't know how um, plein air painters do it, frankly. I still struggle to get good results working from photos. Yeah, that might be the photos though. One of the biggest problems that I see is, is uh, the, the quality of the reference when people do work from photos, even sometimes it might just be one that they find, find online, you know, and I can guarantee you they won't, be, they won't be set up and they won't be shot with painting in mind. You know, if you, if you, if you paint from a snap, then that's the aesthetic you're starting with and it's pretty difficult to escape. I think, you know, more difficult to escape. Let's put some darker values in. Oh no, I'm gonna, you know what, I'm gonna just, knock the whole thing back. I always get a bit frightened when I do this. I'm gonna spoil something, but you know, you can't be too precious. And this is drawing, you know. I think it's, personally I feel it's like a lot like charcoal. The one thing that bothers me about this stage when I do it is that I can lose a little bit of, I feel sometimes that I lose a little bit of texture with too much smoothing. But it does look gorgeous. All the edges are now soft. There is no, uh, there's no hard edge in the whole thing. You know, so I want to start with all soft edges and then I'll, I'll selectively harden them. But when I do that, like the edges that started off softer are now even softer. So there's still a relationship of harder and softer, even though everything is now soft. So this area around here being a dark value, this is quite an important part of the composition, I think, around there. Oh, I've got to stop soon. I've got to go out. Oh, that's frustrating. I'm not far enough through yet. Why does life always get in the way? I've got about 10 minutes and I've got to go. So immediately that throws everything out, you know, you see like all the relationships are working really nicely. They've all been thrown out now. So I won't go right down to the bottom of my value range yet at this stage. Um, I'll go down to like say, this is the entire value range of paint, right? So I'll probably end up with my lowest values around here. Yeah, that would be about right. So I've still got... When I come back in and glaze over the shadow areas, I've still got, um, I can either leave the values more narrow if I want to, or I can really steam in there and. And use the full value range. Oh, 
I think part of the problem is there are so many different, once you've got your basic kind of skills together, like drawing and, and value recognition and uh, edge handling and being able to create form and understanding light. You know, there's so many different possible approaches to painting. It's such a source of unnecessary disagreement among people. Remember like what art forums used to be like in the 90s before we had social media? It was a nightmare. People just attacking each other. Not physically, I mean, you know. I'm glad that's gone. So that's a big dark shape. Oh. Let's be a bit... So these brush strokes are going to show through because that's all going to be glazed. This is frustrating because I don't think I'm going to get far enough through this before I've got to leave and then I'm going to have to have like a two stage block in, which means the painting will take longer, which is a bit of a pain. But you know, I don't. I've never done that before, so maybe it will work out to be interesting in some way. And also, this is kind of part of the visual music as well. Like, which which values are going to be painted more fully? And so, this here, you know, the shadow side of this little squash here into the cast shadow. That's all one shape for me. I squint down. I can't see the difference between them, so I don't paint it. Not at this stage, anyway. So I'm interested in a kind of, what I'm, I'm kind of heading towards at the moment is, I'm very excited by, by uh, areas of a painting being very convincingly realistic and whilst other areas are almost disappearing into into nothing. I, I find that, I just think there's, there's something beautiful about it. So that tends to be kind of where I'm headed. <clears throat> but this process, I'm teaching this process at the moment because I think it's so useful for people. The results uh, that people were getting on the last workshop, because it's it's something that struck me a lot is that I mean, partly from my own experience from, from learning but, and teaching myself, but also from teaching other people, is that it's so easy to get involved in the thing that you're painting and to forget about the relationships of the whole um, and, you know, to go into one area, like, say, this squash and paint that really finely and detailed and then look back and realise that the values are wrong and the colour is wrong with everything else. And then you just invested like a day painting loads of detail in it. So it's like, ha, you know, <clears throat> so trying to find a, a way to get people away from that. And this method, I would strongly recommend it to anybody who um, finds themselves <clears throat> overworking paintings, like working on them and working on them more and working on them more and having them gradually run away from you because you're not quite sure what was wrong in the first place. And uh, it's a good antidote to that. And it's a really good antidote to getting involved in detail too soon. You can't. I mean, look at the size of this brush. It's not like I'm going to be painting any detail with this thing. All I'm dealing with is patterns of, of light and shadow. But I'm thinking about them in terms of light and shadow, what kind of shadow it is. You know, it's not just dark and light. I'm actually thinking about what this shape represents in terms of, does it need to be hard edged or soft edged like? You see these, I could probably leave these leaves a bit lighter because they're kind of, they're just there as a, I suppose just a suggestion that the, everything is going on beyond the canvas as well. It's starting to get a nice, a bit more of a depth to it now. Maybe this would be enough. I'm out of time. I should stop. 
I don't want to. I just don't want to stop. Sorry, I'll try and catch up with the messages in a second. Like, it's almost getting a quality of um, an old black and white photo about it, and I really like that. And it's it's almost a shame when that when that goes and the color goes on, but then you get a, a new kind of aspect to it. So you lose something, you gain something. I did one of these. For, uh, probably a lot of you were there yesterday. I did a smaller one version of a squash yesterday. So this is like. This was done the same way with a wipe out like this and then glazed and painted with opaque paint later, you know, and, and the, the value range is wider, gone into the darks more, you know. But I find myself thinking more and more about what would happen if I just reduced the colour to almost nothing and what would happen if I, if I did uh, an underpainting like this with, um, with some violet in it, dioxazine purple and then painted over it. If the whole thing had a kind of a, a colour bias, if you like, or an orange maybe, or a red, you know, how would that affect what came out? At this, I think it's partly because at this stage, the thing just has so many it still has a lot of possibilities about where you could take it. Um, but it is a really, really nice way to get around that hard, uh, get, it, it solves the problem of hard edges, solves the problem of not sorting out the composition at the start, because that's pretty much all you've got to play with at this point is the composition of lights and shadows and edges. Um, and it, it, it keeps you from focusing in on little details too soon. And get, you can work broadly and freely. And uh, I, was, I, went, I was really excited actually by the last workshop when I, when I really went 100% full on with this, with people. And um, it was nice. There were lots of light bulb moments for people. So it's, it's a, I would encourage you to try it if you haven't already. And you ever feel frustration about those kind of things. So it's, it's loose, but it's also kind of reasonably accurate in terms of where everything is. That's got too dark there, push it back. And all of this lovely texture. Also, a, a lot, I see what a lot in paintings is very finely finished surfaces that kind of take the life and the breath out. You know, the brush strokes are, are a part of the life of a painting. You must feel the same about that, Alex. Your, your um, brush strokes are definitely a part of your signature, you know, the way you paint. Actually, I think I've got far enough. I think I've, I think I've made it. I think I can probably pretty much stop here, let this dry, and then come back in and 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 um, and work into it uh, in a couple of days' time. Let me catch up with the messages. Alive and exciting. Whoa, those are nice adjectives to be using, Diane. Thank you. Yeah. Hello, Sean. Sure. Thank you, Chris. Chris says, the apples are so beautiful, so soulful. But yeah, they come from my friend's uh, apple farm, orchard. All grown without spraying traditional Gloucester apples. These are something Newton, they're called, I forget. Alex says, I always like to quote Richard Smith regarding values and edges and the like. You don't just want to know that something is a softer edge. You need to know by how much it is softer. Oh, that's good, yeah. 
because there is a hierarchy of edge relationships. Brilliant. I didn't know he said that. I've been saying that for ages. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. It's a scale, like a value scale. Edge, it's a, there's a scale of edges, just like a value scale. Am I pushing this too far? I don't know. <clears throat> Give it a last whiz over. Yeah, so I'll be back working on this one some more, probably uh, not until next week, this one, because it needs to sit and it needs to dry. Um, but the basic value relationships that are coming, this actually, the squash needs to be a little bit darker, I think. I've gone too light here. Because the local is, is not as light, obviously, as the cloth. I think that went a little bit. Just in terms of the value relationships. Overall, and then you get your little light bit where the light is. Okay. I'm guardedly happy at this point. Still a long way to go. It's quite a big-ish painting for me, so anything could happen. So yeah, just before I go, I'll pop in the chat a link. Um, I've got a workshop starting in a um, week and a half on the a week and a half, 12th of December. I'm teaching all of this stuff together with the glazing and form modeling. Um, Tim, good to see you. How are you doing? Let's see if I can get these links into the, into the live stream so you can see them. Yeah, I think that worked. Did it work? Can you see those links? Hopefully you can see them. I think it's kind of working. So yeah, I've got a workshop coming um, in a week and a half. I'm going to be teaching all of this stuff in depth and also the next stages, which you're going to see me do to this one over the next kind of week or so, I suppose, something like that. Um, so if you're interested in learning this, check the link out and thank you very much for coming along everyone i am very well tim thank you thank you very much for coming along and um lighting shading whatever it is yeah <laughs> that's what it is tim it is light and shadow that's exactly what it is i've just been banging on about light and shadow for the last hour it's the start of a painting the underpainting which is then going to be developed a little bit further um, thank you for coming, everybody, and thank you for the brilliant chat. And Tim, I'm sorry, but I've got to go now, so you've come in right at the end. Um, but yeah, more progress on this. For anyone who's in my school as well, I'm, I'm filming and will be sharing the entire process of this painting from start to finish, including all of the messing about where I got the, um, the composition together. All right, time to go. It's lovely to see you all. Thank you for coming. And I'll see you all again soon. Bye for now.